And as we round up a big topic of the week, we're talking again about the flooding across the area. We saw video of cars stranded in several bayous across the Houston area. Some say the flooding could have been worse if it weren't for recent improvements, but some lawmakers are upset that federal funding has stopped on certain projects like Bray's Bayou. Several hundred homes flooded around that bayou. Councilman Larry Green says it's ridiculous there hasn't been serious infrastructure funding for Houston. So does the city of Houston need more money to fund flood control projects? Are our representatives in Washington playing partisan politics on infrastructure when it comes to our roads and drainage? Preventing flooding is our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel led by our senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, our news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Valley. What do you guys think about that? Do we need way more money to fund our flood control projects? Well, for Washington not to fund projects the way they have in the past is probably um, unconscionable in my view. But let me just say that I think the Harris County Flood Control District does a great job in, in managing and controlling flooding. When you have a 100-year rain event like we just had last week, there isn't anything that you can do to control that much water flowing through the bayous that go through the city of Houston. And so you're going to have flooding when you have an event like that. 15 inches of rain in one month, you're not going to be able to control that much water. But if you want a, a, a plan that will control flooding uh, all of the time, then you're going to have to fund that. And one of the things that we've talked about, Jackie Valley, on this show many, many times is our government, state and federal, does not focus enough on infrastructure spending such as floods. We had 35 trillion gallons of water in the month of May alone. Right, which is amazing. So like, so like as you said, I mean, that is something that's not typical. Right. So planning for something like that is something that a city should always do, but it's not within a lot of cities' resources. Now, at the local level, we do have the drainage fee and drainage fund, which is supposed to look at infrastructure projects, and that's something that the city enacted a while back. So th that was specifically to address infrastructure issues. Uh, as far as partisan politics, we discussed uh, just in the last segment, we did see an infrastructure bill that's being passed through Finally, and, how, yes. and how that money is going to be spent or used, that's up to the discretion of the city. But so help is coming. Uh, there was a drainage fund and drainage, drainage fee uh, <coughs> that was supposed to look at things like this. So this has been something that's been going on in the city and in the infrastructure planning for quite some time. The drainage fee, I think, was passed under Anise Parker's administration, so it's been within the last six years that's correct. that we passed this. Has that money been utilized in a fashion to, to prevent flooding? Now, again, and I agree with Jackie, there isn't anything you can do about what happens in a month like this month. Well, the, the, the fee was assessed, and, and it's right now it's a large part of it's paying down old debt. So you'll start seeing a lot of that money in, in 2017 onward. But, but look, we spent maybe $1.3 billion with the county and the feds in doing this work, but a lot of work still has to be done. That's why I like what Councilman Larry Green is doing. He's, he's putting the emphasis on the federal dollars, uh, and he's talking about it, not just for the sake of his district and advocates for his district, but really for the sake of progress. We've got to do better. Uh, what we did in the medical center and in a lot of the areas, this flooding did not have a big impact in medical center because we made the investments. We have to make investments in these other areas to protect these neighborhoods. Otherwise, we'll just have these perpetual problems. Coming back, I want to go to Sally, but coming back, I want to talk about the federal government and its inability to work together enough to fund these projects. Sally's monitoring our social media. Yeah, you heard Mustafa talking about Councilman Larry Green. He tweeted out earlier this week that due to the recent historic flood, full funding of Project Braze is a must, and he's calling on Washington to put up the federal dollars to do it. Michelle says, Houston, Space City, too much money spending in this space, and what about your ground? It's time to change Houston flood how many more and Brenda says a lot of people pointing this out this week it was ironic that Senator Ted Cruz demanding federal money for Texas floods after blocking Hurricane Sandy relief that was a big story and it, it, it's an interesting issue that Ted Cruz finds himself in uh, Jackie when he he was blocking funds for Sandy relief and now he's demanding money for Texas well Let's go back to a couple of things. Whenever we're talking about federal dollars, there is a cog, a cog council of government that we have here in Houston. I think um, uh, the representative, uh, the council member is part of that group. And it's 
comprised of 13 counties. They come together and they go to uh, and ask for federal funding. Uh, federal funding that could be used for braids, could be used for infrastructure dollars, could be used for infra infrastructure projects. So those, uh, that's already been in, um, enacted. That's something that they've been doing for many, many years. And you're going to see them continue to do that, especially now that we have this flood that we've just experienced. As far as Ted Cruz, uh, I think he should be asking for dollars to help us with this flooding. I don't remember the specifics when he uh, blocked or whatever. Well, he didn't block was. it, but he attempted to. Okay, well, I, I don't remember the specifics of that, but I think it's great that he's asking for relief right now. What about the, the federal government? And the, the, They stopped the Braze project, uh, stopped funding it. I don't, I don't remember why, but they stopped funding that project. And, and Councilman Green is saying, wait a minute, you know, if we, if we had this money, we may not have had it this bad. I, I disagree with the councilman on the, I think the, the damage would have been the same, but the federal government's inability to work together on issues like that is really a problem nationwide. Well, it, it, it is. And, and, and the root cause of it is that uh, in order to pass legislation for funding in one part of the uh, country, you have to get consensus and support from other parts of the country. So you've got to learn how to work together and not have a press conference and shut down the government, which annoys and aggravates the rest of your colleagues on both sides of the island. Senator Cruz has done that. So as our lead advocate in, in things like this, he's not as effective. I think Senator Cornyn might be better effective at it. But the reality is that in order to do big things in life, you have to be able to get along. And our delegation just yeah, doesn't know how to do that. Yeah, but I don't think that's a fair allegation because an infrastructure project like that, a senator, just because he vocalizes against it, is not going to stop. He vocalized on other people's projects, not, therefore he doesn't get support no, for no, his no. projects. For federal right. projects like this, you, there's an 80-20. You have to pr present your 20%. You have to go through several steps. And just because the senator may vocalize against it, that's not going to stop it if the city is doing what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. as well. But if you stop other people's right, money, go, but he did vote against it.